Welcome to the Monday, September 16th, 2024 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. We'll let staff and members introduce themselves. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. Martha Smirsky, member. Eric Liz, Elbert, member. Liz Pritchett, member. Is Rebecca on as well? No, she's not. Okay. Okay, at this point, we'll let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. All right. Try and keep this quick because we just have applicants and members on tonight. Okay. For anyone viewing tonight's design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. Um, if you want the full video experience, then you can type this link into your web browser and um, I will get a notice and let you into the meeting. Alternatively, you can dial this phone number here and when prompted, put in this meeting ID. And again, I'll get a notification to let you into the meeting. Um, if anyone is having problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. Um, please note that the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, anything related to an item on the agenda should be um, brought in verbally, and you'll need to you know, maybe raise your hand if you haven't otherwise been called on. Um, and then the chair will, will call on you after you've raised your hand. Um, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will help reduce background noise. And in the event the public is unable to access tonight's meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. At this point, do we hear a motion to approve the agenda? Uh, this is Martha. I'll move to approve the agenda. Second. And all in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Liz. And Stephen, agenda is approved. We can move forward to the first application for 153 Elm Street. Applicants Laura Bozarth and Wynn Turner. Are you there, Wynn or Laura? Yes, it's, I'm here as Laura. Hi. Okay. Just briefly describe your your project for us. This is um, in order to comply with uh, Montpelier regulations regarding moving all of the uh, utilities above DFE. You can see on the screen we've brought up um, that that Megan has brought up a picture of. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. Exactly where she's floating her mouse is where we need to build a small platform to access the utilities that are on the side of that house. Um, we need to raise them up. And so this is the proposed location of the um, of the meter pack. And then in blue, you can see my a little drawing of what the platform will look like. Okay, are all the materials wood framing? Yes, that's right. And this, it, you all approved uh, a different, um, so it'll be very similar to the one that was um, approved last year on the opposite gable end of the same house. We we created a new door to access uh, a mechanicals room on the first floor. Um, okay. So you all approved that one last last time. So it'll be very similar in design to what's there. One thing you may want to think about, and again, it's just an option and there's certainly no requirement, is that the the treads for the stair and the platform itself, if you would like, it's probably a little pricier, but you can use a metal grating, a galvanized metal grating, so that you will probably never have to shovel it. 
so that if Green Mountain Power needed to access the meters uh, and uh, at off hours, uh, they're not going to either call you or they're not going to have to bring a shovel to access the meters. And okay. again, that's only that's only an option. Yeah. That's a good idea. <clears throat> Laura, you don't anticipate putting a little roof over that, do you? We do not. Okay. No, I mean, that really, there's no reason for anyone to be accessing this except for, um, you know, servicing that that panel. We also yes. have, I don't know if you can tell, but we also have um, a solar, uh, some solar, I don't know what they're called, <laughs> some solar machinery that's on the side of the house there. Mm -hmm. Does anyone on the committee have any comments, questions, or suggestions? Looks good to me. It, it's pretty straightforward. Me too. me too. I can, I can go through the criteria sheet for the project. Number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or, or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Additions and alterations to non-historic and non-contributing structures shall respect and be compatible with existing patterns and setbacks. New additions on non-historic and non-contributing structures that overshadow or diminish um, these don't apply. This is acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash, storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view. Acceptable. Uh, alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire code should be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to, to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tablature trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building should be considered in the alteration, these stairs for the utilities are acceptable. And again, the option for the application is that they could use a steel grating for the floor of the decking and the stair treads. And again, that's an option for the applicant. All in favor, speak your names. Eric. Okay, this is Martha, I say yes. Liz, yes. And Stephen says yes. So four in favor. Do you want to describe their next step? Um, so Laura, be, uh, there's a option on here, not a recommendation. So I'm not going to do the whole have you sign the recommendation form. Um, so I will move forward with this and get um, the permits issued as soon as possible. Um, I've got to do a... Uh, I'll have to look back. I think I have to do an administrative site plan report. That should be pretty quick. Um, so I, should I email Sorry, you when I, the permit? I should I email that. you when the permits are ready so you can just come pick them up? Okay, I, I didn't catch that. You have to do a, a what? Uh, I just have to do a because you're it's a new structure. I have to do like an administrative site plan report, like just a little memo thing. Um, so, but yeah, that's on me, not for you to do. But we'll email when they're ready so you can just come pick them up. Does that work? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Steve's just finishing writing up the form. Uh, 
company thinking about one thing and almost signed the wrong box again after <laughs> I've only done that a hundred times. It happens. We can move forward to the next application for 135 Main Street, Kellogg Hubbard Library. Review filling in basement window and rooftop utilities as part of post-flood repairs and mitigation work. Is someone there from the library? I'm here, Dan Wheeler of GBA Architecture and Planning. Go ahead and describe your application for us. So this is also uh, based around flood remediation work. Um, a lot of it is the relocation of ventilation systems and controls to the roof and the attic. And um, there are new finishes in the basement um, after some flooding there, and that's all that's all flood wet proof approved um, finishes, et cetera. Um, also relocating the electrical main distribution panel above the design flood elevation. And also involves waterproofing the mechanical room at the basement. Um, that's where the district heat comes into the building. Um, let's see, the existing stone masonry foundation is existing and there's no proposed changes. Um, and the heat in the basement will be a hot water radiator system um, that's waterproof. Um, and elef the elevator machine room um, was moved to the first floor recently, and I believe that's a separate permit. Um, and there was one basement, did I mention that already? The basement window um, infilled with CMU and waterproofed. I think that's about covers the, and we've been working with the historical preservation um, throughout to kind of find the best solutions for all these um, scenarios. So I think that's about covers it. Dan, is it just one window that you're planning on infilling or all of the basement windows? It's just the one the one window where the district heat comes in. Okay. Um, and, and the others will be left the way they are? Yeah, others will be left the way they are. So that's part of the effort to waterproof that. Um, so that's kind of, you know, a dry flood proofing attempt, essentially. So to waterproof that mechanical space itself. Okay. Um, and it's really no, yes, because the district heat comes in there. Um, it's you know, it's more of a challenge to, to modify that. So that's going to be waterproofed as opposed to uh, wet flood proofed. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So just for, for board members, because I know some of you get paper packets, some of you don't, um, the online application has information that I that, that I did not print out because a lot of the stuff in this application really doesn't relate to things that are in the design review committee's purview since their review is about exterior. But I know that sometimes, you know, what's happening inside is why there's stuff happening on the outside. So um, I, I tried to include, um, you know, everything that seemed relevant in the printed packets and then the electronic packet has everything because that's also the packet that's going to get um linked into the permit when it's issued as part of our filing system so there's there's a lot in the online packet um let me know if you need me to to share anything i can actually i can show especially the the window that's being filled in um be good yep yeah and that is one of the things that I did include in the printed packet. So this window here, and I know a fair bit about this because I have to review the river hazard um, permit. This is the window that's going to be filled in. So here's the um, here's the uh, main street up here, curving yeah. around. It's back here behind where the bump out is, is where this window is. And that's what it looks like right now. Um, and here's another view of it from the street. It's back no, here. The district heat comes in through that window. Um, it doesn't look like it unless it's behind the window. Well, it's a that the district heat is in there. 
it's, is in that room. Yes. Yeah. And there is some like ventilation. And I think this picture was taken maybe when some of it was disconnected or I'm not sure. It's, yeah, I think the, been... yeah, the piping comes in below, I believe. Um, yeah. And so really filling it in is, is waterproofing that space. Do you yeah, have a drawing of what you're going to do with it? What's that with? A drawing that shows what how it's going to be when you fill it in. I don't think we have a drawing, but it's it's just going to be a waterproof parge to to match the granite color. I think it's a product called Acrylite. Is it going to be set back? Yeah, it'll be flush with where that window is currently. I would suggest painting it black rather than trying to match the granite. Uh huh. Because that'll just make everything go away. Yeah. What are the other windows into the basement constructed of? Are they single pane glass, double glass, or what is the material? I think that they're single pane glass. And I'm not positive. So, Steve, I just zoomed in here. So that's sort of just what it looks like when with yes. just the window right now. It looks yep. very much like a you know, black space. I was wondering if the uh, the windows of single pane glass were susceptible to debris going floating around in the water. Well, I mean that's so this. I mean, it's not, it's not yeah. a design thing. It's a structural thing. Yeah. There might be a storm window there, but I, it's hard to tell. Yeah, <clears throat> it does look that way. Are those windows flood proof? Are they flood proof? I think that they're cocked and sealed, um, but they're not flood windows. Why aren't you doing flood windows? Why are we doing flood windows? Yeah, I don't I think water gets up to the side, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I think the intent is really to um, waterproof just that mechanical room, but not necessarily dry flood proof the entire basement. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you checked the mortar joints? It's That's a, a mortar stone foundation, isn't it? Uh-huh. Have you checked infiltration there? I think so. Yeah. Well, it well. So the within the within the mechanical room, um, all that granite is going to be treated on the interior, a, a, essentially a waterproof paint um, to help seal those grouts. So I think that there is infiltration throughout throughout the basement and other spaces, and I think that those are getting cocked and sealed, but not necessarily waterproof per se. If that makes sense. Uh, th this is kind of a stupid question, but are you putting in a good big sump pump? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I would as a I would really like to see that whatever infill is put in there with black and then it just nobody would ever know it was there. Yeah. If it's white, it's gonna stand out. Yep. I agree. Yeah, I think that's right, Eric. I agree as well. To blend in with the other ones better. Yep. The other big external item was the roof um, utilities. So I think Steve's rating stuff now about the window, but let me know if you want to see anything on the, any of the details on the roof. I, I would like to see a diagram. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I was also confused on Exactly what is going to project above the, the existing roof. Some things I think are within the the attic space, but it was a little hard to follow all the plans. Thanks. Yeah, there's a lot of them.
Anybody else have any other comments, questions, or suggestions? I think not on the window. I think they want they're okay. gonna we're gonna look at the roof utility. And about the rooftop utilities. Yep. So I'm gonna share those. Give me just a second. So I've scrolled to where I think oh had a weird flicker. Um so the purple is the new utilities, right, Dan, on the roof? Right. Um, and so the different, so you have an RTU4 and a, I think it's a CUA. So those are two different kinds of utilities, right? Right. Okay. Um, trying to see here. Yeah, and, and some of these are just replacement, replacing the existing, but these two in particular are new because they have to do with improving the cooling um, in the library. And this is the front of the building, right? That's the school street side. Oh, that's the school street side there. I believe so. If I'm reading it right. Yeah. Uh, that's now I'm confused. You were, it's facing the. We're facing the front of the building with the drawing. Oh, oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Right. So then, yeah. So there's one here and one here when you're facing the front. Yep. Um, if you give me a minute, I can open up a current Google Street View. There's the current Google Street View. I don't think I can, with just my one, I'd have to share my whole laptop screen to go back and forth between them easily, sorry. Um, that seems uh, off. Oh, go ahead. Huh. It might be more clear on the roof plan. Yeah, I think so. Orientation. I was curious, yeah, how far back they're going to be. Yeah. Yeah, this okay. one shows it. There's another architectural plan, but this one does show where they are. This is the mechanical plan. Um, is it the one? Sorry for the scrolling, people. Mm -hmm. um, is this the one you wanted to look at? Uh, no, I think I think we could look either back on that. I mean, this one is descriptive. Oh, here's, the, well, but... here's the front, right? Yeah. Main Street. So this mm -hmm. is set back here. Yeah. Right, there's the front that has the the decorative I don't know what you even call them. So there's Therapy. that one. This is tucked in back here. That's there. Looks to me like they're not going to be visible from the street view. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the intent. Yeah, and if you go back up to that roof plan, that one right above there, yeah. Yeah. So the top two exist now and they're being replaced. Yeah, those two. And the other three are new and so that yeah they've been placed so that they're not visible from the street oh the one on the, the addition on the left is within the attic is that right or is that on top of the roof that one i believe is on top of the roof and you also have to excuse me because my colleague steve Cradell is leading the project so he's much more familiar with this aspect but i believe that's that's on the roof and I think that's shown in that section. And actually, we could scroll to the architectural roof plan. Um, Flat roof, isn't it? Yeah, low, low pitch. Uh, what are they going to look like uh, on the exterior? On the exterior, there yes. are there are cut sheets, so they're they're just they're just mechanical equipment. Uh-huh. There are cut sheets in this within the application. Oh, yeah. Some of them look I like that. 
Yeah. Okay. That's, that's one style. And then yep. um the other one, sorry, I'm gonna have to change. Other one. Looks like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. What color Maybe. are they? What color? Yes. I think they're either tan or white. Tan, white, or gray. <laughs> or gray. You I said the common colors are tan, white, or gray. Yeah. I I, th I think gray would be a good choice here because it disappears all, into Vermont. From Canada, that would <laughs> blend right in with the sky. <laughs> you can't see them at all from the street, can you? No. Maybe the one on the addition from the front view, you might be able to see that, but it's not going to be very visible. Are any of these going to be visible from School Street? No. Yeah, you can, I mean, you can see a little bit of that pitched roof above the lay light right now from School Street, but that one is on the other side of it. Um, so you really won't be able to see that. Most of these are located in, in sort of in the central part of the building. So you'd have to get up pretty high to even see them. In yeah, I know you can see them locations. from my third floor window, but but I don't think you can see them. From where I sit now, you can see them. But from the street. Yeah, so there'll be, yeah, you can't even, maybe if you... Yeah, you can't see the, the sloped roof above the laylight there, so they're on the other side of that. This all looks good to me. I would suggest gray as a color. I'm not sure that it matters that much. Yeah, if we have that option, we'll, I think that makes sense. I agree. They look like they're located in about the, the ideal position, so they would not be visible. Yeah. Yeah, I think they look they look fine too. Thank you. Any other questions about the infill or the location of the utilities on the rooftops? Nope. Okay. Not for me. Then I'll read down through the criteria for the this project. Number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or, or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Uh, the removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, construction techniques, or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Uh, there are no deteriorated character defining features here um, and no treatments that will cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments. So this is acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. Acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact, or adequately and appropriately screened from public view, acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of a building shall create a rhythm with the infill and the one window. 
has minimal impact on that. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tablature trim, and other forms of molding or, or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building acceptable. Landscaping, straining, and site furnishings. And we're just dealing with mechanical equipment screening. Uh, yeah, that's really it. That's really it, and, and that's acceptable. And lastly, windows and doors on historic structures, character-defining window and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features, such as trim, sash, and molding, shall be preserved to the extent possible. Uh, when preservation is not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. And again, the wind fill is ex when the infill is acceptable. All the only condition I'd put on that, Steve, is of the uh, uh, painting it black. Yeah, I have that in the recommendations window infill will be a black color to minimize visibility and match the other windows and match the other and match existing remaining windows Based on that recommendation, all in favor, speak your names. Eric. This is Martha. I say yes. Liz. And Steve says yes. Or in favor. Um. So, Dan, I will scan this recommendation form um, and uh, Cal Covered Library, Dan, will need to sign off on it. Mm -hmm. um, that he's okay with that recommendation, which I think is probably fine. Yeah. Um, and then I think I should be able to move forward with issuing the zoning, the river hazard. I have everything I have for both need for both of those. Um, and Michelle is around both tomorrow and Thursday. So mm -hmm. um, getting through her backlog, I we should be able to get those permits issued. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you Thank for you. coming and good luck with your project. Okay. Thanks so much. Okay. Have a good night. Good Thank night. Has everyone had a chance to look at these September 3rd minutes? Yes. Um, and I'll make a motion to accept them the way they are, the way they're written. I'll second it. All in favor, speak your names. Martha. Eric. And Stephen. Yeah. I was absent, so I won't vote. <laughs> okay. It's approved three to zero. And does anyone have any other business? No. If not, our next meeting is Monday, October the 7th. And do I hear a motion to adjourn? So I make a motion to adjourn. Well, we've got two motions, so I'll call that a second. All in favor, speak your names. Martha. Yes. And Stephen. I think Eric did it too, and then he muted himself. Yes. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, everybody.